Hello everyone, my name's Bob Mitch and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Now, we're in the 317 Live build and a short few videos ago I did a guide on going and looting around various areas. So I pointed out areas like the bunkers, the caves, going to security post Korea and just basically how to make some money. Today I'm going to expand on that a little bit and we're going to go in depth and we're going to visit some of these locations. I've got two in mind for this video that I'm going to do today, depending on how long they take. And one of them is going to be Security Post Korea, because it is very, very lucrative for weapons, as I've pointed out. I'll demonstrate how lucrative, hopefully. And we're also going to do a cave mission. Not necessarily because that's going to be full of weapons, but I just want to show how much money you can make from one cave run if you check the corpses and things, especially if you're, you know, you're quite new to the game and you're trying to make up some money quick, whether it's to buy some ship components or you're trying to save up to buy yourself a new ship in-game, which is always a good thing. So, what I want to do first, however, is show you a setup for what I do when I'm going to do a mission. Time was way back when, and I may overlay some footage from donkeys years ago, you could just die in-game, whether that's blown up, getting shot, or blowing your spaceship up, whatever, forgetting to put a helmet on, regardless. And you would just wake up in the last outpost that you stayed at, so something like Port Olisar, because that was the first location in-game, or one of the planets, and you'd still be in your armour that you had on, you'd still be carrying your weapons, you'd just wake up screaming like it was a bad dream. Now, of course, we have persistence and there is a bit more risk to everything when it comes to losing your equipment and gear. So you have to take a little bit more care because even if you put out a medical beacon, if you're incapacitated, you don't know if the person who's coming is going to help you or they're just going to put a bullet in your head and steal all of your gear. So there's that little risk factor there as well. So for cave missions, they have an atmosphere inside. It's not normally an atmosphere that you can breathe, depending on where you are. If it's Hurston or Microtech, then that's fine. But if you're on one of the moons, the moons at the, the, the gases inside match the moon's atmosphere, even if the temperature doesn't. So once you go inside a cave, the temperature will balance out and you won't cook, freeze, but you still won't be able to take off your helmet, as one of my workmates learned when we were doing a cave mission the other day. He had 14 seconds <laughs> and he managed to get a drink, but he couldn't put his helmet back on, so we had to resuscitate him and then he had to put his helmet on in a panic. I load out for one of these caves then. What do we want to do? So when I run these caves, I just tend to wear medium armor like this, depending on how confident you're going to be. In these caves, the guys are normally pretty far away unless you like to, you know, run and gun. So I tend to use a sniper rifle. First, you need your armor though. So I tend to go with my medium armor. I'm just wearing an Artemis set here. You want a backpack, and when it comes to what armor you're wearing, you want to wear the best backpack that you can wear for the armor that you have on, because there's lots and lots of ore to pick up here. You see, I've got a lot of backpacks stashed here. So I'm going to put on a medium backpack here, which is what I can wear with this chest piece. It all depends on what chest piece you have on. So if you have a medium chest piece, you can wear a medium backpack. If you've got a heavy chest piece or you're wearing one of the environment suits, like the Pembroke suit, you can wear a heavy backpack. So. Backpack sorted, lots of storage space now. Next thing you want, of course, is some survivable things. So basically, stuff to help you out and keep you alive. So normally what I do is we have sustenance. And after doing lots of the wrecks, I often visit the wrecks quite a lot because they have these cruise drinks. And these drinks are very useful because they carry not only um, hydration as you can see but they do food as well in fact they do almost equal amounts if you see there 38 of one and 30 of the other so these do both food and thirst hunger and thirst sorry so they're very very useful to have liquid diet for your character but it keeps you going and you don't have to worry about hunger and thirst that much next we want some utility stuff so you can see I've got lots and lots of multi tools and things that I picked up over the time that I've been playing this because I played this far too much we want the multi-tool, we're just going to grab a generic multi-tool here. These are useful of course because if you want to move things around then you can, be that people, so corpses that you've done. Or otherwise, I'm going to throw a tractor beam attachment in there. You need to make sure that you put an attachment in there when you equip this thing, as I've learned the hard way in the past. We want a med gun, because these things are always useful. And we want some med pens, and I'm going to stack these out. I always do when I'm going on an excursion. And because I have some, and we have space here, 
I'm also going to take a tiger's claw. It might seem a little bit strange if you're thinking, oh, that's a tiger's claw, but if you commit a crime accidentally, either by shooting somebody who might come and raid the same cave as you, then you've got something to go and reset your crime stat with if you need to run and reset your crime stat. So this is the stuff that's going to keep us alive. Next, we want our weapon loadouts. As it comes to sidearms, the sidearm is just completely personal preference depending on what you want to have. For me, it's always a coda. Always, always, always a coda. I love this gun. I don't bother with sights or anything on it because I'd like to think that I'm a pretty decent shot, but I always bring a coda and a few magazines to keep it going. And as I said, for a cave mission, I tend to bring a sniper rifle. As it happens, I have lots of sniper rifles. I own quite a lot, as you can see, from doing various sub flares and lots of wrecks and things like that. Um, but I tend to just pick whatever's my fancy, so at the minute I'm just going to take an AO because it matches my armour set. Um, doing these things is important if you want to get gear, especially at Korea, as we'll see. I want to make the note here that the only sniper rifle that's available in-game for you to use if you're coming in fresh that you can purchase is an arrowhead, so these laser sniper rifles here. Everything else they took out of the shops, which is silly. I know that I think there was a thing posted not long ago where it was supposed to be like part of a bug that they are fixing in the next patch, so they are aware of it, especially when it concerns the loot crates that were disappearing. So that's something to make note of. But yeah, it's still sucky because it means if you want any other sniper rifle in game or some other kind of heavy ordnance like these grenade launchers, uh, the P6 LR rifles, which is the basically the 50 cals. Uh, what else have we got in here? I know I've got some LNGs kicking around somewhere. The S71, that's not sold anywhere. The rail guns, uh, Demico LMGs, the F55 LMGs. Yeah, that they're, they're very, very rare, and you have to just look out when you're doing things like security post career to try and find them. So, yeah, it's just a bit sucky. Right, ammo for this thing. We want three magazines of this because there's going to be quite a lot of guys in these depending on which one we do where else have we got some no that's press 71 there we go three magazines for that and we're about good to go right then i've had to come and find one around hurston on aberdeen because there wasn't any on crusader i don't seem to have a lot of luck with them around crusader I'm going to have to start doing the Microtech ones, I think. As you can see, out here on Aberdeen, I have about 12 minutes survival time, but that will change when we go inside the cave, as you'll see. The mission I've got is evict hostile occupants. 12 hostiles remaining inside. Let's just get inside the cave. There we go. You can see the temperature thing has gone. Temperature is coming down, so we don't have to worry about survivability in here. I'll just bring up this mission so you can see it. You see, we've got to clear the site of all hostiles, and it's a 30,000 UEC mission. I want you to make note of that, because it is important. And what else we're going to do is, because now we've got this throwable here, I can activate this, and we have a little bit more light. It's not great if you've got players around, of course, because then they can see you miles away. But when it comes to NPCs, they don't care, and they don't react that quick enough anyway. So, we go down into the cave. guy doesn't want to die. Wasn't expecting one that close to the entrance actually. Normally they're a bit further down. Let's just sweep down here before I start searching him because I bet there's going to be more of them. Maybe not this time. Okay, so this is what's the important bit. You sweep these guys for loot and you right click on their equipment and you click open so they always have multi-tools but what you're after is this stuff the gemstones that's what's valuable so you check both the torso and you check the legs because if they don't have it in the torso they may have it in the legs let's press on I didn't want to die. I'm being cautious here because sometimes you can see their flashlights 
and they leave big trails and sometimes you can't, it's hit or miss, so you have to be careful whether they'll shoot you or not. Oh, here he is. So again, we just sweep his armour. No, oh, he's literally got poop in his chest there, but in his leg he's got some diamonds. Or some gems, whatever you want to call them. I always tend to pinch the multi-tools as well. The free multi-tools are never a bad thing. There was the green guy. He was at the back, wasn't he? Oh, there was more than one. Oh, okay. So I did end up killing more than two of them. I did wonder, because it looked like he didn't want to die to start with. Dolivine, not quite as valuable, but still good to sell, as you will see. Now when it comes to guys with backpacks, you can take the backpacks if you need them, if you're not wearing a backpack. However, I would highly recommend that you move the stuff that's inside it to start with to somewhere else, as it tends to vanish on a relog, as I've told you in other videos. So again, we just move all the gems. Oh, okay, I shot one guy and it killed two of them. That's an interesting bug I've not seen before. Let's just make sure there's no more of them. Yeah, when your bag gets full, you kind of have to start playing around with the inventory a bit here and waiting for it to spawn a space. So it can be a little bit tedious, that's why you make sure everything's dead. But, as I said, you'll see that it's well worth it. He's got nothing else. We move on. Aha! Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Just going to make sure there's nobody around. Doesn't look like there is. The cave goes deeper. But as you can see here, you can find loot boxes in the caves. And this one hasn't got anything particularly useful, although the mandible helmet is quite nice. This is a rare thing, actually. So this is a, um, a helmet from the Arson Invasion. I am actually going to take that. That's quite nice. <laughs> so it's from one of the uh, lieutenants that the Arson Invasion wears. Is, I don't know if you saw the flavour text, but it said it was a modified helmet from one of their commanders. So I am taking that. This cave is a long way down. You just have to be very wary. Ah, there we go. That's another good hint for you if you're doing these missions. So the pink glow lights quick flares are helpers to give you an indication of the way you are supposed to go if you're trying to find your way out. It's always good to remember. That was from up there. Okay, so now I know where I am. So we definitely need to, need to descend deeper. If you're going deeper into these places and you see lots of quick lights in succession like this, it usually means you're going in the right direction. Remember there are a lot of them being in here. This is going to be quite difficult because I don't have flashlights to help. sure the other one is around here as well. There he goes. I ran out of ammo and my gun bugged as I was reloading. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> Bit of an execution style to finish off but it works. And there we go. They're all dead. So now we can sweep them for shinies. 
Okay, so we're back in Olisar, and as you can see, I have filled my backpack with all of this stuff. We'll put the helmet in the inventory, and that does free up some space, so you had to keep in mind that that space could have been taken up with a few gems. I pretty much looted the last guy as uh, I filled up my backpack there, so your mileage may vary. It may vary as well with the flashlights. Usually, you don't have to run around like a lunatic, like I had to there and sort of find the last guys because it was all dark. Normally the flashlights light them up and give them away because they stand out like a Christmas tree and you can just headshot them with a sniper rifle straight away, no bother. Anyway, remember we got 30,000 AUEC for the um, mission itself. If we sell the dollar vine, 61,000. So we're up 91,000 UEC already. And then ahead of that is another 44,000. So we're nearly 140,000 credits. Up just from doing one mission, and that's why this one is so profitable. Everyone, if you need money, cave missions are the key if you want quick, fairly quick, fast money. And as I said in my other video, to get them when you um, spawn in in the bounty hunter tab, you will have some bounty hunter missions. Normally, you'll only have one or two. And the most important one you can see, let's see if it's round here on mine. There it is. So you have an evaluation mission to do from the local security contractor, although you'll see them all regardless of where you are. So this one's for Microtech because they haven't done Microtech's one yet. There will be one for Hurston security and there will be one for Crusader security. And once you've done those, it opens up their chain of quests and you need to do the first um, bounty hunter mission so that you can start getting the different risk targets. I can't remember what that's called, but it's literally the first bounty, mission, bounty hunter mission that you see. Um, I know I had a screenshot of it in my other video, so it's in there. But yeah, they're, they're the ones that you need to look for. And once you've done those two, the cave missions will start opening up for you. I'm around Crusader, so it's probably not going to show me them here. They don't tend to, they just show me the bases. Um, they don't show me the, the ones to go and clear out the criminal nests like these. Oh, saying that, I have one on Daymar now, look. That's the first time I've actually had one pop up. But here you go, you see. We can see that there's a cave on Daymar can access on foot and you can go and do the same thing 12 guys that you've got to find and kill and steal all their gems and make more money and you know 140 to 150,000 UEC a run ain't half bad right then the second part of this is I've shed all of my weapons as you can see apart from my sidearm which is always useful because you need the backpack real estate should I say so now we're gonna go to security post Korea and I'm just taking a Pisces I'm not taking anything big, you don't really need to take anything big, you can if you want, but it's just a bit more cumbersome. And you just need a ship that ideally has some local inventory that you can access. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to Security Post Korea. And here we are at Selin, and Security Post Korea is the square marker that stands out to all the others because it is not an outpost on the ground, on the ground of the moon, on the ground of the moon. It's a station, and like the Kovalex station around Daymar. There it is. Now we can go and see if anyone's aboard the station. If there are people here, generally it's best to leave it alone and come back later. I don't know if that's it. No, that's an advocacy ship because it's white so it's neutral. You can ping to see if the ship's but yeah, if there's people here, more often than not, they're either looting, like you are, or they're clearing their crime stat. In either case, they will tend to blow you away if they see you. So it's best just to come back later if the station is already occupied. I've left this chat open this time, so we can see what's going on around the chat. Just bring the Pisces in nice and easy on this little pad here. So there's two things to be aware of when you do come here. One of them, of course, is players, as we just covered. You can risk it if you want to, but of course you risk losing your equipment. And the other is to see if the NPCs are up. And I detailed this in my last video about this place. But uh, yes, there can be a mission that spawns two NPCs. You just have to be wary and see if they're around you when you come in here. So as we run in, we'll do a quick sprint just to see if there's any NPCs kicking around in the main areas. 
They'll stand out if there are. They're in their very obvious Nine Tails armor. And if they are, you can just quick melee shot them like I was doing, or you can just blow them away yourself. Doesn't look like there's any spawned, and we'll just see if the mission's there. Doesn't look like it. Nothing about Korea, so maybe someone's already been through, or it's just not on someone's list. But yeah, you'll get the mission to see uh, NPCs around Korea, and you can steal some cool Ninetales armor, as I detailed. After that, it's just a case of sweeping the entire place, so all three floors, because there are three, three floors to this place, and finding weapons crates, which I'll point out to you as we go around. So let's have a look around. Here we go, here's one on the floor, not been opened yet. And straight off the bat, amazing. You can see how rare these things are, and yet one just spawned up straight away, and I have a railgun. Now it's worth noting, and I'll do it with the P6 in here as well, because I will just take it. When at the current patch, there's a bug where if you just throw things straight on your backpack, you lose ammo and you lose sights. So the best thing to do is to drag stuff in your hands to start with. It was someone who commented on the video last time that made that comment. I can't remember who it was, but thank you so, so much for that because it's immensely helpful in keeping all the sights, especially when you are looting sniper rifles all the bloody time like I usually am. So let's continue looking around. We've already found a railgun, so this trip's already a winner. My character's running a lot slower with the railgun on. I can already notice that. There's another one. Nothing of any note in there, but as you can see, if you want to sell this stuff, it's free loot, and there's a site that we will take. Sniper rifles, two sniper rifles, and a custodian. Not what I'm looking for, but still, again, if this is you, free loot. I'm mainly on the lookout for the things that are more heavy ordnance. So the grenade launchers and the LMGs, LMGs especially because those things are just so rare these days. In fact I looked out earlier today before making this video and I found two F-55s. So I was very lucky in that regard. Got a combat knife this time. There's one. Uh, the gallant rifle and some missiles but no missile launcher sadly. The second floor done, and we move up to the third floor. That wasn't a bad trip at all. One railgun and a P6, so a 50 cal sniper rifle. Like I said, rarer weapons are here, so if you want a bigger sniper rifle, different sniper rifle, here's the place. And then once we're in here, we just shove these into the ship's storage to make sure that they don't disappear. And then we take them back to my base, which in this case is Port Olisar. We wing them in the storage and off we go. And then when it's Port Olisar, if you use Port Olisar as a base, because it's well worth using, you can just jump servers and do this again and again and again and again and find yourself plenty of decent weaponry. Sort of stock up your own armory. It's well worth it. So with that said, I hope these were very, very helpful, guys. It's uh, certainly one way to gear up in game, even with the little sort of jankiness and bugginess that 317 has had. But it is still go worth going out and finding these things. As you can see, free way to make guns. If you don't want the guns, you can always just take them and throw them in ships. Especially if you're with a group of people and you can kind of lock the place down so no one else can get in. And then you can shove all the weapons in a crate or something that you spawned or purchased. And go and make some money with them. If you don't want to go do the... Uh, cave mission is just like I've shown you so <laughs> thank you for watching guys I hope this was helpful go out there and get some money go out there and get some weapons have fun play the game thank you for watching thank you for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed if you like this and think I deserve it please give it a like consider subbing if you fancy sticking around if you're thinking of taking part in the game feel free to use my referral code on screen or click the link below for bonus in-game money that helps me out as well see you in the next one